Hi there and welcome to episode 160 of the ADHD Adults Podcast. I'm welcome. James Brown. What? Sorry. <laughs> You're welcome. I just said welcome. I'm James Brown. The man whose body doubled with the counts off of Sesame Street when they lost the puppet for a few weeks. And I'm joined by... I'm sorry. <laughs> God, it's an amazing start. And I'm joined by Professor Alex Connor. Congratulations, now, Alex. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Who has double the number of bodies than he used to in a hole in his forest. And yes. Mrs. ADHD, whose body doubles as a mould for an action man. She actually used to model um, as Ken, but her muscles are now too big. Alex, hi. Hello, James. Hello, James. What? Doubling. I, that's that's the joke. It's doubling. Well, body doubling. Oh, James. Okay, sorry. That's the that's. I was the on the joke. wrong script. Brilliant. <laughs> that's that's the joke in Rabbit Ears. Is it doubling? It's excellent. It's it's weak. How are you both, Mrs. ADHD? First. Shit. Yeah, I mean we know this. What a shit! I don't want to be alive. How about you? No. No. Um and uh, Alex, Professor Alex. Actually, pretty bad. No, only joke. I'm excellent. Thank you, James. Yeah, all good. The numbers in turn tells me, and, and I just I want to make sure I get this right. They tell me that nobody cares about metrics. What's wrong with you? <laughs> One of whom has sent us a letter. Make the grammar's poor again. Then is it what, that? None of that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's right, James. It's from her. I know. Check that as well. I should probably yeah. It's from a, uh, a Robert from Kidderminster. It says, I listened to your episode on higher education. Why are you always so mean to James about this topic? They have much more experience than you, as they were both high for their entire education. <laughs> <laughs> I think that should have been James. As they were both high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think Dad's, he's, listen, he's dead. Give him some slack. I mean, it's yeah. difficult to write a letter when you don't have hands. Maybe he's going with gender neutral pronouns, which is, you know, uh, good. yeah, it could be. It could be. Oh, yeah, it does I feel like, like that letter was making light of substance use disorders. I, I think we probably, I'm, yeah. Sorry, Robert. I've had a real one. Can I read no. it out, James? No. Please do. Thank you. It's from a Ronnie from New Zealand. I haven't checked. Hi, I hope someone has. Hi, Ronnie. I have. It says, I love your podcasts. As a 57 year old who only just realized last year that I probably have ADHD, yes, I know, bit thick. I want to make it clear Ronnie wrote that. I'm not adding it. <laughs> They have been lifesavers. It is on brand for you, though. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a bit thick, Ronnie. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but had to share. Was listening mm. to the ADHD and driving episode the other day, whilst driving, of course, and eating nuts and drinking a cup of tea. <laughs> when I got to the part about not drinking and eating while driving, then I dropped a nut and the phone rang. So I, <laughs> I lose the next bit, lol, lol. <laughs> And I was also picking crumbs out of the steering wheel detail with a toothpick at the time. Just wondering, do you think I have ADHD? <laughs> Seriously, keep up the good work, guys. It really is a life save. But I think, I mean, dropped a nut to ding, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah just you're right. Nut. <clears throat> it is. I also think, just if you're not sure, just that whole letter, take it into your psychiatrist. Yeah, sure. And I'm that. pretty sure they'll say you've got ADHD. I just want to quickly say, I, I it was Robert from Kidderminster's birthday two days oh, ago. Yeah. And I, I forgot again, second year on yeah. the trot where it was on the family, family WhatsApp chat. And then afterwards I felt like a shit person because I forgot my dead dad's birthday. Yeah. Despite it being a psychoeducation expert of the thing that means that's yes. going to happen yes, neurologically. yes. 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 Christ, you two, honestly. Mm. Me? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that was from before. <laughs> oh, right, sorry. <laughs> just the self, just the self-loathing and self-doubt I have to deal with. Sorry. It's all about me. Mm, of course. So as usual, Tarquin, our metrics intern, has handed his polo mallet to Sam's dad for, for this trucker to give me some information about another city we've got listeners in. The wonderful city of Derby in the UK. I used to be a builder in Sinfin with my dad. That's, that's not part of it. It's our Thirth, Thirth, James, highest city for <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Tarquin says, in his note, 
written with this Fulgore Nocturnus pen, there is a phenomenon, a phenomenon, phenomenon, easy for me to say, known as the Derby Pyramid Scheme, which isn't an actual pyramid scheme, but Derby is, Derby's rumored to have a hidden pyramid built by Egyptians who went on some holidays there in ancient what? times. Yeah, it's supposedly buried <laughs> under the Derby Arboretum, Sam. Uh, stores, treasures of untold value, mummified body of Darby. Oh, it's and your Carmen. joke bit. Oh my God, I got so excited then. I thought there was a treasure hunt and oh my God. She's well into ancient Egypt because of a game I bought Honestly, a mystery game. I fucking love it at the minute. And, I, and Sam and Laura things. spent seven hours hyper focusing and it made good Literally. progress, to be fair. <laughs> so we should unpack and Sam, presumably they were. Uh, it, ancient Egyptians were aliens, I mean, probably. Is there? Oh, is my mum would tell you all about that. Yeah. Oh my God, she knows all about aliens. Mm, nose. Nose is a word, isn't it? Nose. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to move this on because I'm podcast daddy. As usual, this Alex teasing me yeah, for yeah. two years about being a fake professor and then becoming one himself of a podcast is a tragedy in three parts. We choose a theme. Last time around was about ADHD and higher education. And this week we're going to be discussing ADHD and body doubling. Oh, yeah. The three points. That should have been not... your one. Sorry, but that should have been your hello. Hi. Oh, no. Sorry. It's a different <laughs> I can't, I can't. I'm enjoying read. this. I I just want to say I haven't written this next bit. <laughs> I don't we know if I can. Them. No, no okay. you can't read that out. That was okay. So the the three parts, um, including the Joe Joyce and evidence he fought on Saturday and was very bad. Alex, yeah. the psycho education monkey. Talking hello. About in part two, we give our personal reflections and some whopping great tips on education, it says Alex, but actually it will be on body doubling. And then we'll answer questions. Yes, yes, see, it happens to you too, doesn't it? We'll answer. He oh, oh, fucking hell, Sam. We're going to have to bleep that. Now. We are going to have to bleep that. What? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. In the script. Yes. Yeah, it, it was a joke it was there for James. A joke. The it was there as a joke, and I didn't notice it. We'll have to. Bleep oh, one thing we can't do is sorry. read that name Yes, out. and we can't talk about who he is because it will be obvious. We'll we'll bleep that. Um, I'll tell you. Um, in the final section, we'll answer questions. In the section, somebody did suggest a name for the final section. I need to look back through Instagram because um, I've forgotten it. it. Stop. <laughs> do that again. Fucking hell. I spend hours editing this podcast. I'm so you sorry. two, you two, you know this, and you deliberately fucking put things in that you know I'm so going to have sorry. to cut out. I'm so Anyway, sorry. Alex, you annoy me as much as two people, possibly three. So, what yeah. is body doubling? Thank you, James. Um, at least you get to practice your little beat button. Okay, one of the problems faced by, and if we're honest, all. Oh, Almost everybody with ADHD is the three P's, procrastination, prioritization, and peeing without hitting the toilet seat. <laughs> no, that is a joke one. No, that should have been productivity, that last P. The old executive functions of choosing what we do, starting a task in the first place, and getting it done are all tricky with ADHD. You can't, you can't start with ADHD. This is, it's one of the only bits. I, I think I'm generous in this podcast in that I sit back and let you two do most of the work. My, one of my only fucking bits is this bit. I have one bit and you know what you're doing. No. Just shush. So, there's loads of reasons why these are hard thing for us to achieve. <laughs> General executive dysfunction problems of the brain, aligning what our emotional side of our brain wants to do with what our rational side has planned. And very importantly, both our intellectual bit and the emotional bit of the brain, which I sometimes think isn't even me, both of those things feeling reward from the starting and finishing of this job. This, this next bit's going to take a while because she's not even aware of where are we you are. Are you saying there's a single answer for this? <laughs> oh, no. No, Sam. No, I am not. And can I say what a perfectly asked question? What for James, etc., etc. et cetera, et cetera. Me. Blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> no. So aligning emotional and intellectual parts of our brain to, to start something, making sure they both agree on that this is worth doing is, is fundamental. But we're always talking about hacks, tips and tricks for ADHD that either don't seem to ever work or or stop working after for no reason at all. Some people can't bear smartwatches. Some people have to use them like me. Some people lose planners like their confetti at a wedding and nothing works for everyone. But 
of all all the things that the three of us and most people we think with ADHD know about is body doubling, maybe ding, not sure. <laughs> that's a push. That's a hard ding push. <laughs> it is. That's it's pretty basic what body doubling is, and it does what it says on the tin. When humans are next to each other, even online, but that's slightly less so, we have a, a different set of emotions around intention and action of our behaviours. We can feel more accountable just by being in the presence of somebody, more motivated, less anxious sometimes about doing the wrong thing, about choosing the wrong thing with no one around to check. If someone's there to check, we can be less anxious about that. So one thing that loads and loads of ADHD adults with do, uh, sorry, with ADHD do, even those never knew their ADHD and work this out for themselves, we find out a lot of this, is body doubling. And that means simply working in the company of somebody else, whether they help with the task or not. These are sometimes called accountability partners by people who want to make it sound better than it is. Does everyone feel that? That doesn't even make sense. No. Do you remember last time when I said, I'm going to start just making a bullet point for your question so it's less forced and so you can just oh. reinterpret the question for yourself? Does that work for everyone? What a perfectly asked question, may I say. So, James, why can't you listen and learn to how Sam does it? Uh, no, nothing does. Nothing does. What we're going to say is not true for everyone, and certainly not all of the time, and not even for every type of task. You have to try everything for yourself. So, you're not known as, oh, as Alec. What? You're really loud there. Oh, sorry. You're not known as um, as Alex the anecdote monkey um so evidence i wish i was known as the anecdote <laughs> monkey yeah there, there kind of isn't any not really not for adults with adhd evidence that body doubling helps what what we do have is we have to interpret from other mm. studies we have evidence that in people in general who are prone to procrastination when you're working as part of a team that does help with productivity and we know that if you look at people's neural activity in their brain, including the activity of dopaminergic neurons, it appears to increase when we're in face-to-face -face situations. Although online meetings means you, you see less of that than in meet space, it, there was mm. still increased neural activity, even, even on Zoom. Not as much, sadly. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We've got to and we've got to acknowledge meat space more than that. I know I ding, but meat space, space, meat space. for meat. That's a hard yeah. ding. That is. It is hard dings. A hard ding. Meta ding. Hard dings. A hard ding. It is. What's Sam doing in meat space? Anything. What was what that? I like the movement. I'm trying to. I'm trying to put together my gyroscope thing because mm. I smashed it just before the podcast. Yeah, I saw. It's it a sound approach. I think it's a sound approach to podcasting. I'm pretty sure that Gabby Logan and that new bloke off of Lad Bible does that during during his podcast as well. I would have I would have liked us to have recorded the moment where you threw it and smashed it, but James said I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> Actually, I I was recording a body oh weirdly I was recording a body doubling, doubling video for our Patreon last night, but halfway through it, I just had a complete meltdown threw shit everywhere was smashing shit up and then collapsed on the floor and cried and thought i probably shouldn't leave this in a body doubling video because it's going to be quite distracting <laughs> so i don't know what i'm going to do with it but it would be useful for people to see because i don't think people see meltdowns very often they don't and they don't talk I look about like a that. petulant to toddler i'm sorry i've oh. derailed the script completely no. You have, but we infantilize a lot of ADHD and autistic traits, don't we? Fidgety, always oh, fidgety. He's having a meltdown. He's fuck, fuck. I'm hyperkinetic. Fuck you. It's it really does frustrate me the way we we infantilize mm. these words when they're not. No, um, but what I we also to, are. I, like a... <laughs> I, I had a go. Carry I had on. a go at getting back to the script. Yeah, you can't though. It's impossible. What we also are, it apart did. from Sam, is social creatures. <laughs> that, yeah. that is ableist. That's ableist. <laughs> <laughs> Not because of the autism, no, because she's wholly unlikable, just to be clear. <laughs> it was a personal and vitriolic attack. It was not ableism. That's true. So we're motivated by the sheer presence of other humans, even if we don't want to be. And for ADHD specifically, it seems that we are externalizing validation of that task. Quite an important thing, even 
In reality, that external partner doesn't give a shit. It does seem to matter to us, increase motivation. Everyone we speak to knows this can help. Even mm. though the evidence hasn't happened yet, the research hasn't happened yet, I'm very hesitant to say this. But you can't easily deny that, even if we had statistics. What, what would you measure if I can't get something done? I do it with a body double, and I am more likely to get it done. That is routinely and commonly all of our collective experience, right? So there's no stat that could negate that. And that's why research becomes a bit of a, um, a, a, a millstone around your neck. Time and time again, this is called the ocular test in science, right? Um, have a look. If there's a giraffe eating your tree in your garden, you don't need three giraffes to prove it. And you don't need to measure the number of leaves in your trees to see if see if it's still there. That's quite important difference. I can see what? some face. You, you've used, mm -hmm. sorry, you've used the giraffe thing before. And I, and I can almost I know. Yeah, she's I thinking did really about well to stop myself there. Yeah, you did. <laughs> And then I, was, I could hear it and I wasn't even looking you at you. Yeah. What if people don't have somebody to body double with? Like a giraffe or? <laughs> a giraffe no, would, I mean, be, that's it, not, it? would be the worst thing to have because you'd never get anything done. Oh, that'd be amazing. Not helpful, Alex. Focus, focus, focus. Um, just before the break, I was talking about how I struggle with friend groups outside of neurodivergent because for lots of reasons. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? If... The idea of people with ADHD needing to body double, and it's not as easy. We are barriers to social connections for us, lots of barriers indeed. Um, if you can't be physically present with someone for whatever reason, then it isn't as good online, but it's better than nothing. And it works for me, actually. I find it quite valuable online body doubling. Not everybody does. Yeah, we do. While well, James does body doubling sessions on on our Patreon for our subscribers. And I Which find really it good. useful just having, I could just see them in the background and it helps me to stop getting distracted. And yeah. because I know I'm going to report back in 25 mm -hmm. minutes, I want to be able to say that I've done something. So it does really help. Because of the reasons I've just explained very clearly in my psychoeducation bit. <laughs> yeah, because of those reasons. Unbelievable. If we should have a bit for personal reflection so you could have shared that then. <laughs> 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 but, <Sorry. laughs> uh, yeah we do do our body doubling on a patron but there are other often american body doubling of co-working they call it platforms and apps there's i was looking at a few flow and focus mate flow club they all begin with f don't know why i have clients i know james does as well who who have tried body doubling often they realize it themselves they will um, say, oh, I can't tidy my room because I have to get my mum to do it for me. Or And, and then I ask them and their mum's just sat there. They, they, it's mm. just the presence of somebody else. It's not a lack of ability. It's a lack of performance like ADHD. So the take home is that the research hasn't been done, but most every ADHD adult we've ever met recognises that body doubling is one of the more consistent ways to get tasks done. It is not a cure. It seems to work online or face to face and it doesn't need someone who is an expert in that area or that task it can be useful for home stuff and professional things as well in general um for all the reasons i've just given a motivation and intention and a bit of accountability without the stress of somebody staring at you and telling you off body doubling is a really valuable aspect that's it that's my body doubling bit james Bang fuck for that. We'll take a break and we'll be back in part two for our personal reflections, including the ones Sam just gave and some tips. See you in a bit. Bye. No. Alex. Hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Welcome back to episode 160 of the ADHD Adults, where we're talking about ADHD and body doubling. In this part, we'll be giving our personal reflections and tips. I won't have already given mine, but I haven't given a tip. Ding. Um, James, you're first on the script. Go. <laughs> that was really that was really good. I think we need to acknowledge that. Well done. Yeah, it was really good. I like I like the go as well. Yeah. It's one, it's, go. They, those are the little signs of, of Sam's autism that I find genuinely charming and disarming. Just <laughs> fucking go. Yeah. Okay. Love it. I um I think I'm an ADHD oddity in many ways in that I don't get much RSD. It's only about very small specific things. And actually, Sam, but I don't, Sam. I don't listen. Even it's about just, your hair. No, I don't. 
That's I love mad. that. Look at it. It's incredible. In fact, in a, a recent thing of a Patreon interview with a Dracula, one of the questions I can't actually I can't say that because I haven't released it yet. I'll, anyway, my hair was mentioned. I so I don't great, get a lot of great honesty, story, bro. I know. <laughs> and <clears throat> I generally am actually quite motivated. I mean, I, I I've just sent you a my, my working week, and I, I manage most weeks when I'm not ill to do kind of 60 hours in a week and to get most tasks done. But there is one thing that I cannot do without body doubling, and that's emails. And I have to sit oh, in Sam's Christ, office. Yeah. I have to sit in Sam's office next to her like a little child while she just sits there and I say, I've answered this one, and then move on to the next one, and then say, I've answered that one, and I, I, otherwise I can't. And I, in the body doubling we do on Patreon as well, it, it, one of the first things I do is I'll say, right, I'm going to try and clear specifically, I'm going to try and clear 10 emails in this first half an hour, something that's achievable, and then I can normally do it. I'll do more than 10 just because I know halfway through, I'm going to have to report back and say, right, yeah, I managed to, to do 10. Oh, no, I actually only managed to do three, but they were complicated and they, and they led me somewhere else. So it's one of these, again, just small, rare examples of an area where I just cannot motivate myself to, to do these things. And I... I think a lot of it comes from academia. Or you know the amount of emails we used to get. I used to get, you know, on average, 250 emails a day. And most yeah, of yeah. those were reply alls from complete fucking dickheads. But <laughs> I would happily I would happily leave some of those emails for weeks because I didn't care. Um Months. and I know a lot I know a lot of people I coach with ADHD can't do that. To them, they have to respond immediately because of RSD and because of imposter syndrome and because of all of that negative internal talk. But I'm fine with I'm fine with leaving them, um, but I know it upsets Sam. So that's why I have to sit with her and body double and do them because I don't want to cause her stress. So I, you know, generally speaking, I it does work for me, but I only need it for that one thing. In terms of a tip, my tip ding Ooh. is obviously we have a we have a, a the charity we uh, that we run has a body doubling channel on Discord. Um, we also have body doubling sessions at nine o'clock on weekday mornings at the minute it's monday wednesday and friday but i think we're going to change it to each day because i'm rejigging my working week um if you don't want to use those services if you can't use those services maybe there are people that you work with if your organization has a neurodiversity support group all you need to do is to set up a teams channel and have a teams meeting constantly open so people can drop into that teams meeting for example or zoom meeting or google meet meeting or you can message someone and say, is anyone up for a bit of body doubling thing? Um, and then that, that means that you can quite easily use the people around you to, to get stuff done. But the, the last thing, and this is really important, and I hinted about it earlier, if you go into a session of body doubling, have specific and achievable aims. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to work on this project. Because yeah. you, you probably won't. You'll end up going down a rabbit hole or the first barrier you hit, you'll just do something else. So set any time you, you want to engage in a portion of work, set yourself specific and achievable aims. I am going to answer five emails. I am going to write one paragraph of text, for example. That's so good, James. It's a perfect tip. And that's actually body well, doubling and not. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's every <laughs> And literally it never is. said before, Ding. Is, that's <laughs> what you've just said is for every task we ever do body doubling yeah. or not right yeah. that's what i do in coaching yeah. is to say to people at the start of every session is just make sure you know what you're doing and that under promise and overachieve it just set yourself something you under know you promise achieve. overachieve yeah it's, yeah and another good tip ding. ding um well that's me um sam what about you yeah, sam got any yeah, well, I've already said that it helps me. It's actually better for me online than in person because mm. I have lots of fucking sensory issues and stuff and don't do as well when I've got somebody in my space with me. So actually, I much prefer it if people are online, but that's just an entirely personal thing. Um, I've got no problem getting shit done at all. I'm constantly, constantly working and constantly want to work. My problem is staying on task. So body doubling really helps me to stay on task because 
I find I I can work all day long, but fuck all done because I'm just I'm just jumping around from task to task and doing a little bit, but not getting anywhere. So when I have when I go into James's body doubling sessions, it just helps me because I'll say what I'm going to do, and then I see them out of the corner of my eye and think, no, 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 you've got to stay on that task, and it helps me, not always but most of the mm. time to stay on task which is really really good i was just when you were saying about emails when i got back we were away for like two full days three nights on holiday and i got back and had 670 emails and was... <laughs> university yes it's that, uh, it's but... that yeah that's why i say it's that age-old thing isn't it do you dip into the emails when you're on holiday and ruin your holiday well, or do you come I took back to a tsunami me, as you yeah, know but i forgot to take the laptop charger so <coughs> luckily Amazing. it ran out of charge and i couldn't carry on working the whole way through but yeah alex what about you You've just really like, triggered a thought, Sam. Such an important fact. When you said that you almost, I think, did I, are you right? And you prefer online body doubling. Yeah, yeah, I right. much do. Because be, people in my space of, annoy me. Well, I was just thinking about the research, that neural activity is higher and there's more of an effect face-to-face -face online. Well, big, bigger isn't always better in neural activity. I, mm. I, I have to... I feel exactly the same way. And it occurred to me that maybe we don't want it to be that much. I would actually no, find it extremely it's intimidating get, and difficult. Yeah, and I get overstimulated as well. That's yeah, the exactly. <laughs> Not with me, you don't. Nobody does. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Awful. Sorry. Um, well, apparently, I'm, I stand corrected. Yes. Well, um, what about you, Alex? I've already well, well, I'm in that. the middle of it. How have you? Are you? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, wasn't, I obviously wasn't listening. No, and nor should you. Board, board. Um, yeah. So I built my house that I'm currently living, living, living. You built it yourself. Well, you know, in in the way that people with money do. In the, <laughs> somebody did oh, it yeah. for me. I, I forget who. <laughs> <laughs> Put that thing there. Now there. That's what I mean. And the 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 kitchen. I was told many times, don't have your dining room and your kitchen as one room. And and what it means is my uh, lovely wife, Lisa, she sits in the kitchen while I'm cooking and I'm enjoying, I'm loving cooking. She sat somewhere else. I'm really lonely and, and like utter, utterly unmotivated. I can't get a pan out. It's, it really is yeah. the, the night and day, the difference in whether just someone's present. And I mean, she's watching telly even. I don't need yeah. anything other than contact online when 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 I'm working with anyone online, I find it so motivating. I'm going to join James yours to do my emails because I'm struggling massively with uh, with with emails. And I, I also have a, a dingy ta task list for 10 a day, but I've got thousands that I've got to at least archive or something. And it, it makes me feel sick. So I thought, oh, of course, I need to do that. It hadn't even occurred yeah. to me. Can I use I it all the time. Yeah, please go on. Just, just mark them all as red. They're still there. You can still search for them, but then you end up. We well, haven't got that red number of like six thousand to deal with. The, the, what I've, the problem I've got is the um, the I don't feel it's the right thing to do, right. and therefore okay. I'm paralysed from doing it. I need to. I know what I've got to do. I just you know, um, yeah, really difficult to do that i think again what sam said annoyingly she just doesn't even think about it does she and then she comes out and says all the things i was going to say every time it, when you said it doesn't always work but it will it, it works more often than not that's the key here isn't it that it's just yeah. it's just something in your arm it's it's better good is is good enough it doesn't have to be perfect and that's yeah, that's does. really it my tip would be would be face to face or online it doesn't matter that's definitely a ding um look for support groups in adhd either in your local area I, i'm a friend of mine john who i haven't asked him this so i can't share runs one in liverpool there's face to face groups there's online groups and people within that might want an informal uh, body doubling session with you ding actually they're strangers so stay safe online make sure you know what you're doing uh, that's my tip, James. Meet strangers online, apparently. <laughs> Amazing. Um, we have got time for the usual game. No, so just we have. Um, no, we have. So <clears throat> it's not something that I've lost, um, mislaid, um, etc. But um, as as you know, 
I've really fucked my back up. Like, I'm in a lot of pain at the minute. Um, even when Sam gave me a hug this morning, <laughs> she squeezed me and Jesus Christ, I screamed. To be fair, it hurts when any Sam hugs Yeah, anyone. I know, exactly. It's <laughs> that, that grip is is mm. ridiculous. So, <laughs> ding, ding. But, yeah. but how is it that I hurt my back, Alex? <laughs> um, was it because I had to give a talk yesterday and I didn't check where it was? Said, it's okay, I'll drive there. And it was an eight-hour round trip. Was it because I walked up the stairs wearing socks as opposed to being barefoot or wearing shoes? Or was it because I spent too much time sat in the wrong chair? Right. This is easy. You fly up the stairs because you're a bat. Uh, so you don't wear socks, Dracula. You don't sit in a chair. You sleep in a coffin. So you drove for eight hours. Simple. No, wrong. <clears throat> and the reason what? I think this is, yeah. So basically, I've got like comfy, sleepy socks, which you can buy in B and M and places like that. That they aren't much money, but they haven't got much traction, mate. And as I was running up the stairs, don't yesterday, buy those one. Why are you giving an advert? No, no. But they're comfy. But what I'm saying is, don't run up carpeted stairs or walk uh... over linoleum floor because. It's not easy. And the reason I, I like the story is because I didn't do it once, Hal. I did it three times. I fell over three times wearing the same socks, going up the same start stairs at the same rate of speed because I can't did walk up slowly. Did you go in beast mode? Do you, Sam, climb upstairs like me in beast mode with your hands on the... Only if I'm tired. <laughs> Round robins then, isn't it, Sam? Anyway, <laughs> that, that puts me, I think, 11, 7 up or something ridiculous. I'm absolutely smashing you, Al, ding. Which is, oh, God, what a thought. Brilliant. Um, we'll take a break and we'll be back to answer some of your questions in part three. See you in a bit. Welcome back to episode 160 of the ADHD Adults podcast. As always, pretty much for the first time or the first few times, we're doing your questions answered in part three, which isn't called Just the Tip, even though that was my favourite name for any of our bits. <laughs> Right, start with question one. Sam, have you got anything? You've got one for us. Sam, Sam, Sam. I have, yes. This is from Alex, not you. Uh, Hello. Please could sorry. you share the Discord link in the podcast description or explain how to find it on an episode? I've tried to find it a bunch of times and either get distracted, could because ADHD, obviously, or just can't find it through Discord, probably also because ADHD. Really enjoy listening to the podcast. It's been immensely helpful in coming to terms with my recentish diagnosis, was diagnosed in 2021. And I really appreciate how honest everyone is and how relatable your experiences are. I especially enjoy the, enjoy the game. Sorry, Alex. What? Because <laughs> every single example, I've done something either the same or similar, and it makes me feel so much better about mm -hmm. it. So thank you. Hope your back's all right, Alex, after falling down the stairs three times. <laughs> um, just, I'll just answer this. We can put the Discord link in the um, in the show notes, but also yeah. if you go to our pod, our website, theadhdadults.uk, scroll down on the home page. The link to Discord is at the bottom. Or on the charity's website, because the Discord actually belongs to the charity, not us. Um, it's on the FAQ page of the charity. And the charity is ADHD. Adults UK. Dot UK. <laughs> who, got, who called it that? What staff bastard called it that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Got in the, yeah. What idiot put the words in the wrong order when they got Jesus. set up the Twitter account, Al? Did not know it was going to blow up, to be fair. <laughs> I thought it was just you and me <laughs> doing a tweet once a week. Sam, if people want to do it Patreon body doubling. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So, true. yeah, we accidentally yeah. got the Tasmanian <laughs> devil involved in the chat. That was the mistake. If so, uh, Sam, if people want to do the Patreon doubling or James, what, what, what is it on the website as well? Yes, it's on our podcast website, the ADHD adults UK, and there's a little tab at the top which says extra content or something or support the podcast or something, something like that. Cheers, and thanks, Alex. Uh, yeah, welcome. and through, yeah, through that, you can then get access to Patreon, and then Sam. I don't know if she does this. She's so busy. We'll then upload links to the Zoom um, um, body doubling thing. And we also have a, an ongoing, I think, Zoom room or call, isn't there, Sam? So people yeah. can drop in and body double and, even when we're not doing it. Yeah. And actually, if you don't want to do it live, Ding, 
mm. I do pre-recorded body doubling sessions so you can just have me playing in the background and I'll be doing shit Ding. while you can do shit <laughs> this latest one I obviously have a meltdown halfway through but most of them I don't have meltdowns in so yeah that you can just have that playing in the background and things like hobbies I do some where I'm crocheting and you can teach you to crochet and you can do it along Alex do you have a question for us I've got a question about you making poor crochet related choices no I have a regular question <laughs> love crochet it's um, one of my things at the minute I think I would like it too. This is from Goo. It says, hi, Count James, picture of a Dracula, <laughs> Dr. Balloonhead, Professor <laughs> Balloonhead, <laughs> <laughs> and Tornado Sam. Thanks for a great podcast. Something I look forward to watching and soaking my brain in the latest, latest decent info regarding The Thing. <laughs> my question of this message is, uh, it says a bleeding edge question, but I think that might be a typo on our part. On severely deficient autobiographical memory, SDAM, what's your take on, on this and where does it meet with ADHD? Uh, thanks for reading out. That's from Goo. Really Hi, good question. Goo. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Jane, this is, so obviously long-term memory is, is good and bad in everybody with ADHD in the same way pretty much as it is with the whole population but this isn't quite the same as long-term memory is it it's about self-awareness james what do you what's your thoughts on this yeah, yeah it is so autobiographical memory is the is the ability to memory to remember sorry events that happen in your life so if you think back to your 10th birthday party alex when no one came because you didn't have any friends you can probably it remember sitting, sitting there eating cake you know on your own weeping <laughs> in your toxic i actually and didn't have any friends <laughs> And that would be an autobiographical memory. Now, as the name suggests, severely deficient autobiographical memory is having issues with recalling accurately those previous events that had enough of an emotional impact that you remember them in long term memory. What we know is and there isn't a lot of evidence, but what we know is, is that adults with ADHD um, on average, but not always um, have difficulties in recalling self-relevant autobiographical experiences. So stuff that's about us, not about I went to someone else's like birthday party, for example. And we also know that, that the reason for this is possibly what we call in, inefficient source discrimination. And that's the context of a memory experience. Now, if you think about how our poor metacognition and positive illusory bias, we often think something happened when it didn't happen, for example, that kind of explains the fact that if we don't understand the context of a memory experience, it can impair our ability to recall okay. that autobiographical um, because we don't uh, have any emotional awareness. connection to it, right? No, yeah, ex exactly. So oh, it, it, yeah. it's entirely possible that, that adults with ADHD are more likely to have severely deficient autobiographical memory because of this lack of context in terms of our, our previous experiences that have been laid down in long-term memory. That makes so much sense. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, no. no, no but you know, no, when, you know when you're trying to remember where you've left something and you think, I can absolutely... I, I I know that I left it in this place and you've got such a concrete memory of it. And that makes sense that it might be from another time, but you're absolutely sure that it's from that time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. What about inattention? Presumably, most normal people, can't say normal, would be paying attention to the birthday party. And we yeah. might have been paying attention to an interesting woodpecker. Yeah, or, and, or mind wandering. Or just yeah, mind wandering. Our mind. I always think it, mind wandering suggests we want it, doesn't it? But it means yeah. our ability to bear focus is is ripped away from what we're trying yeah. to look at. Yeah. Oh Spontaneous God. Mind I can I just share yeah. this? My yeah. seven year old said to me last night just before bed. She was singing a song over and over, and she said to me, "Why, why won't this song go out of my head?" We were doing a test, and I really wanted to do the test, but all I was thinking was the song. And I, <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm sorry, so sorry. I've given you that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ding. <laughs> no. Inappropriate ding. <laughs> oh, that was, I, that, I think that was a really good question, though, Goo. Thank you for that. It was. Thank you, Goo. Yes, thank you, Hypergoo. Um, I'll introduce my own question, Thanks. obviously, because yes. you two are fucking useless. Come on, James. So we've got a question. Clocks are ticking. We've got a Question from Izzy Wood, which says, driving and parking tickets and ADHD, and why do you need to tell the DVLA? What is it about ADHD and driving that makes us a risk? I only just found out I have ADHD. I'm 36. So how have I been driving for almost 20 years that's so unsafe? 
Is there a neuro slash psycho slash bio explanation for it? People have complained about my driving in the past, but I think this is normal for everyone, right? My students do comment on the way I drive around or to college, being erratic or rushy. I have a kid and stuff, so, you know, I am in a rush most of the time, but is this ADHD? One student's mum, who was also my neighbour, saw a car the same as mine in a ditch, and they just assumed it was mine. <laughs> I was quite offended because I was like, I'm no, I'm gonna drive, you know, I'm not gonna drive into a ditch, am I? But the whole class thought it was likely. There's a lot in there to talk about. Oh, really there really, to... really is. I, yeah, right. I wanna go to I wanna go to Sam first, just because remember, she crashed my car because she was looking at builders making a house on our estate. So any thoughts from you first, Sam? Yeah, I mean I, I do... I am reticent to talk about it in case <laughs> my insurers or the DVLA are listening. But yes, I can get um, distracted by things. And when I do, I will crash the car and have done on multiple occasions. Um, but you, you don't have to tell the DVLA unless you think that your ADHD has such an impact on your driving that you are unsafe uh, plaques on that sam let's just 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 to reiterate that again you do not have to tell the the dvla it's just such a great message and, but yeah. also your medication you only have to tell them if your adhd or your medication impair your ability to drive safely yes, yes. Yeah. yeah and that's really important so yeah and that's and and, and if you do tell them they're going to take your license off you yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, and you, Sam, you had somebody. You, yeah, you, I've had somebody yeah, that even the charity recently that said that just in their consultation with the psychiatrist, they just mentioned that sometimes they can drive erratically. And the psychiatrist said, you need to tell the DVLA that. So they told them and obviously their license was immediately taken off them. And then you can't challenge that this without having right, medical it? evidence to say that you're safe right. to drive. So, yeah, I think it would have been best if they'd been given the advice. If you think your your ADHD and and this was somebody that hadn't started titration yet, so they might have improved after they'd mm. started titration. But anyway, yeah, unless you think that your ADHD or your ADHD meds have a negative impact on your driving and make you unsafe to drive, you don't have to tell the DVLA. Yeah. James. What about generally, I, James? Why we're sorry, you go. If you, yeah. I mean, if you just look at all the things. So if you, if you look at the statistics, we are more likely to be involved in road traffic accident um, on average. So not everybody. And if you think about how ADHD presents in terms of inattentiveness, it's easy for us to get distracted. That In fact, the, the letter we had at the start of the episode about dropping a nut mm -hmm. in yeah. the car and then reaching down to get it. Yeah, um, we are more likely to be distracted. We are more likely to have spontaneous mind wandering. So that's not when you start to think about, oh, actually, when I'm going to do this, it's just all of a sudden your mind goes somewhere else and flits yeah. from thought to thought we um, are more likely to get anger and that can lead to aggressive driving and road rage. So if you look at collectively the, the kind of diagnostic and non-diagnostic symptoms of ADHD can make us less safe drivers, but it can also make us better drivers because if you are risk averse and if Hello. you are actually, exactly, if you're like Alex, if you're the kind of person who actually Oh my God! What was it you, you do? You pretend you're driving a fucking starship or something? I don't know. What, I don't know what you're talking about. You <laughs> definitely said that in an earlier episode. We, yeah, we Millennium be Falcon. First. I have yeah. that. So, me, so many, many of us actually are safer drivers because we are hyper vigilant because we know we've got ADHD. So it varies, as with everything from ADHD, there is no one size fits all description. We vary. Some of us. I get road rage. It's one of the only times I get angry. I'm not really an angry person. You know why this is all fucking act me on this mm -hmm. podcast. I'm a very passive person, but in, I, I've told this story before, getting out of the car with a pool cue and smashing the door in of a taxi driver, which had an 80-year-old woman in the back because he'd stolen my car parking space, which is ludicrous. Yeah. And, and therefore, if you look at the, the collective experiences, on average, we are more likely to be involved in road traffic accidents or to get speeding tickets or to drive less safely but not all of us and the last thing i'd like to say and this is kind of more of a personal reflection in my discharge letter from a very large organization that do a lot of diagnoses and have a standardized bit at the end which kind of says this is some of the you know try the pomodoro technique it said you should tell the dvla you've been diagnosed with adhd wow and that is not true no, it's alex absolutely not 
<laughs> yes, but I, I'm I'm more than my hyper focus is driving, and I'm really risk averse. I love driving, and I hate the use. I hate carbon dioxide going into the air, so I cycle everywhere, like looking mournfully at the other cars. But I've, I've never had a car accident. I've never wow. been close, really. Yeah, That's when incredible. I was incredible. I know, and it's because I'm really, really hyper. For always, I'm, I find it so. I feel connected to my car more than when I'm walking yeah. along. Yeah, I, if I, really I, I but I don't get that all the time. But sometimes I feel like the car is part of me, and when I've got that, I just exactly. feel pure joy. It's like me and the car are, are, are one, and yeah, I love it. I what I want to say to Izzy though, who wrote the letter, is yeah. that, and this is might be hard to hear, Izzy, but most people do not get complained about. It's not an ordinary thing to hear, and then this is difficult. But if multiple people are saying that, there is a time at which you might have to start listening to that because it isn't. If, if you are putting yourself in danger or somebody else, I would really hate it if we'd gone, Oh, it's fine. It, it doesn't sound like it is fine to me. And there is help, there are things you can do before you mm. narrative driving, for example. Licenses. Say again. Narrative driving, for example, can really help. It's used yeah. in speed awareness courses. So as you drive, you say, oh, there's a risk there. That van's parked on the side of the road. There's somebody, uh, there's a woman with a Zimmer frame. She, she could step out into the road. Narrative driving can make you drive more safely. It's really good. I always say, how can I make my passengers feel safe? It's not about whether I know I can stop in time. It's do my passengers know? Yeah, do they that's feel really that I good. can it's massively important to me. Another one is, and sorry, but if you spend all day in hairdressers, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. If you've got your, if you check your phone or text no, when you're driving, I used you know to spend all day, every day in hairdressers, and I barely ever got my hair cut. Barely ever. Yeah, no, honestly, it was really hard to get my hair cut because I was too busy. Listen, if you've got if you struggle with drinking, you're eating, you're checking your phone, get rid of them from your physical capabilities. Mm. Create a space where it is safe. You can't do it. You can't put yourself in the in the path yeah. of impulse when you're like us. Yeah. My impulse true. control is fucking shit. Yeah. Because That's of my really neurology. Weird. Yeah. You can't, you can't allow that for yourself. Think about your passengers. Think, I always just say, because I'm a monster, as you both know, mm -hmm. um, and it would be easy for me to have road rage. I say, how can I make people, uh, other road users feel, how can I make their lives better? When I get in a car, because the other alternative, my natural state is how can I fuck shit up? And it, it, that doesn't make me feel good. So I try I try and overtly say these things to myself whenever I'm in a car. So you can try that, Izzy. But honestly, it doesn't sound great. Oh, they might just be taking the piss, though. It's a lot, though, isn't there? I think it's, you know. <laughs> but yeah. that about passenger is really good, because when I used to drive my nan around... I yeah. used to try my absolute best to make the gears changes smooth to stay under the speed limit because I knew yeah. that she was conscious of that. And I didn't want to because she'd hold on to the handrail while I was driving along. Exactly. I, want to do that, I, get so angry. I, really I got really angry. Conscious. I'd be oh, really angry at people who did that because it showed me I was a bad oh, driver. Really? And, that, and then oh. I, re I reframed it as if they're doing that, what can I do to reduce that instead? Oh, yeah. and it made, I just made didn't want her to feel unsafe. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, with hindsight, I didn't. Yes. Um, great question, Izzy. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, right, I'm bored. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm bored. Should we wrap it Take up? Us so out, then. that was episode 160 of the ADHD Adults podcast, where we talked mm. about ADHD and body doubling and lots of other stuff. If by a miracle you enjoyed this episode, something, 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 leave a review, something, something website, mm. join us on Patreon for live body Patreon. doubling sessions. Find all the stuff that you need, or maybe not at www.theadhdadults.uk. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, all. Trigger warning, klaxon. Klaxon, klaxon. Klaxon, klaxon. Big klaxon. No. Trigger warning, klaxon. Klaxon, klaxon. I basically right. fucking hate myself. I don't see the point of myself. Why am I even on this earth? There's no point to me whatsoever. I can't. I've been six times now. I've had to. I was supposed to get a blood test in August last year. Six times I've tried to get this blood test. And every single fucking time I've failed. Why can't I just do a normal fucking thing? I know.